What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here, and today we're gonna show you some wire configurations for two dual voice coil one ohm subwoofers. I have the two subs right here, so let's check the resting impedance on each terminal. So I'm gonna take my multimeter to check the resting impedance for each terminal real quick. Showing we have one ohm here, and if we check the other side, you'll see we have an impedance of one ohm as well. Now I'm gonna check the terminals on this sub here. Again, we got one ohm, so now let's check the other side. And once again, we have one ohm there. So now let's talk about the first wiring option, which is series parallel. In a quick overview, what we're gonna be doing is connecting the positive terminal on voice coil one to the negative terminal on voice coil two, and we're gonna be doing that for each subwoofer. This is gonna raise the impedance on each woofer to two ohm. Then with the remaining open terminals, we're gonna wire the two subwoofers together in parallel to drop the impedance to one ohm. So to start, I'm going to take a jumper cable and join the positive on one coil to the negative on the other coil. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the next sub here. So the positive on one voice coil to the negative on the next voice coil. So right now each woofer is in series. So we need to parallel them to each other to drop the impedance down to one ohm. So we need to take another jumper cable and plug one end into the open positive terminal here on our first woofer. Then I'm gonna take the other end and join them to the positive speaker wire here that's acting as our speaker lead to the terminal on our enclosure box. So now that they're connected together, I'm gonna run it to the open positive terminal here on our next subwoofer. Now we still have two open negative terminals that we need to run in parallel as well. So we're gonna take another jumper cable and plug one end to the open negative terminal on our first woofer. Then I'm gonna take the other end and join it to the negative wire that's run out to the terminals here on my enclosure box. And then I'm gonna plug the two joined ends into the negative terminal here on my second woofer. So just to summarize, we went from positive to negative on one voice coil for each sub. And then with the open terminals, we went from positive to positive and then went to the positive speaker leads from our enclosure box and then negative to negative to the negative speaker leads from our enclosure box. So now if we check the impedance at the terminals for our enclosure, you'll see we have a final impedance of one ohm. Now when you have your subs wired this way, you can use any amp capable of running the subwoofer's rated power at one ohm. A common application is to use a one ohm stable monoblock amplifier. Some dual enclosure boxes have multiple sets of terminals that you can use to wire to your amp. Also some mono one channel amplifiers have multiple terminals where you can wire a subwoofer to each terminal and it will parallel in the amp itself. If you have an amp like this, it will give you another option for how you can wire your subwoofers to your amp. For example, if I have a mono amplifier that has two sets of terminals for speaker wire and an enclosure box that has two sets of terminals, my wiring would go as follows. Positive of one voice coil to the negative of the opposite voice coil for series wiring. And with the remaining open positive and negative terminals, I would go straight into my enclosure box leads. Matching the positive lead with the positive terminal and the negative negative lead to the negative terminal. I would do this for both subwoofers and then go directly from my enclosure box two sets of leads into my amplifiers two sets of speaker terminals, where I would then parallel them to a one ohm load. This is just something you want to keep in mind when you're wiring. The second wiring configuration is series wiring, which will give you a final impedance of four ohms. In a quick overview, we're going to wire both subs in series, which will bring the impedance of each sub to two ohms, and then in series again to your amplifier, which will bring the impedance up again to 4 ohms. To start, we're gonna take a jumper cable and plug one end into the positive terminal on our first voice coil. Then we're gonna take the other end and plug it into the negative terminal on the second voice coil on the same sub. We're gonna do the same exact thing on the next sub, so from the positive terminal on the first voice coil to the negative terminal on the next voice coil. Next, we're gonna take another jumper cable and plug one end into the open positive terminal on our first sub. Then we're gonna plug the other end into the open negative terminal on on our second sub. Next, we're gonna take the direct leads from our enclosure box, plug the black negative wire into the open negative terminal here on our first subwoofer, then plug the red positive wire into the open positive terminal here on our second subwoofer. So now if I check the impedance at my enclosure box terminals, I get a final impedance of 3.8, which can be routed up to four ohms. Now when you have the subs wired in this way, you can use any amplifier capable of running the subwoofer's rated power of four ohms. But another 
Another great application is using a 2 ohm stable monoblock amplifier running at 4 ohms. If you use a 2 ohm stable amplifier running at 4 ohms, your amp will run really cool with great efficiency which will save your car battery. You'll also hear increased performance because your amp is running so cool. So hopefully this video was helpful in how to wire your 2 DVC 1 ohm subwoofers for any configuration, but of course if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time. Wow.